again, it's just refreshers. Most of you know while you're here, you need a nutrient management plan. You're here to get your nutrient applicator voucher up to date. Make sure you sign the sheet like they said at pesticide. You gotta sign the sheet. That's the key number one to know that you're here to get your credits. And your reports, AIRs. They were due March 1, so needless to say, I've got quite a few of them sitting there waiting for me to look at them. But again, if you know, oh, I didn't do it, get on at ASAP. If you think you should have gotten one in the mail and you didn't, let us know because, again, we sent you one. We're expecting it back. Um, we will be sending out reminders in the, in the form of a warning letter, but it is a reminder about the 1st of April um, that ultimately, again, still gives you an opportunity, but we ultimately need them. That's information we all got to have. Again, it's the only contact we have with every operator in the state on an annual basis. Yes, we're still out there doing inspections, you know, it's like everybody else, so we're still around, but the annual report is very important. Again, we need them, need them now. So if you got questions, don't hesitate to ask, get a hold of Jenny, myself, we'll get you there. <clears throat> Again, um, it's talking about, you know, annual reports are really no different this year than they've been for the last several. We're tracking everything that you grew on your form, farm last year. We're imports of manure, exports of manure, nutrients from the manures. Again kind of got a stuff you got to track. Um, and again, it's all coming down to information that we as in a department is tasked with us providing reports to the governor on an annual basis. That's basically where 90% of that information is asked is because of data that we have to report on a state level as part of nutrient management regulations. Again, there's penalties if we ultimately get to that point. If you don't find, file them, Again, that's only if we get to a last resort and we just can't get it for whatever reason, then there are penalties. This was changed a year ago. There's actually penalties have been increased. They were increased a year ago. We have not used them beyond the initial $250 fine. Um, but this year, unless something changes, the intent is that it actually will go above that if and when need be. Basically, it's based on a sliding scale. So if you do it late within 30 days, it could be 250. If it gets more than 60 days, it could be as much as 1,000. You know, so it's basically, again, to get the very few that we don't get. I don't want to dwell on it, but I want to make you aware. Again, electronic AIRs that I would say, give or take a little, 50% of us are using at this point. It was new a year ago. Again, it's the system that we have. You go through the Maryland one-stop portal and you register. Again, when you were mailed your packet of information, there's information on how to do this. It's not a mandatory, but it is strongly encouraged. There is a chance that we have to do it this way in the future. Um, right now, we're still mailing everybody the packet of information, but it's like everything else. It's not cheap. It's not free. Give or take a little, it's a couple dollars per operator that department has tied up. And you say, well, it's not a big deal, but you multiply that by five to 6,000, now it's 10 or $12,000. And again, we have mailing issues and so forth. There's a chance, it was discussed this year, that in the future, you may be kind of like the pesticide. We may send you a postcard that lets you know it's due. We may tell you where to go get it. It'll probably be available on our website and through this. So we strongly encourage to go this way. It is, in my opinion, is easier and better, but it is a learning curve. <clears throat> Again, you would go in, you register, you get registered through the program. You basically go into it, you search for the AIR, it's gonna bring up the form. Um, you walk yourself through the form. If you leave certain things blank, like a yes or no question, you gotta answer yes or no, or it won't submit. You'll get to the end, you hit the submit, and you're like, well, I don't know if it went anywhere or not. Key is if you didn't get a response, very short order with less than a minute that says you've submitted the form successfully, then it, something didn't happen right. So again, go back, reiterate, call me, whatever need to be. Once you do that, you've at least got recognition, recogni you've been recognized to say you've submitted. When your specialist, this region me, gets an opportunity to, to review that, um, we're gonna go through and if we don't have major heartburns with anything, we're gonna approve it. Once it gets approved, you're going to get another email that says you've been approved. So again, hang on to that. That's your receipt, if that's the right word. Again, I would say at this point, give or take a little, it was last year and this year's too, probably 50% of what I get electronically, I cannot approve. So we've certainly got to do some training on how to do better, if that's the right word. Um, because again, what happens is, I'll use the word junk in, junk out, because ultimately it's going to do a report that's going to go to the governor or go wherever. And if the data that I accept 
is really off base, then it totally skews the data. So we're not trying to be onerous, we're trying to get good information is the intent. And a lot of times it's just little mistakes, but it adds up to big information. So be careful. Again, if I'm sending them back, I'm not trying to be mean, I'm gonna send it back. There's gonna be a comment that says exactly what my concern is. Sometimes it's just reevaluate something, but it's just, that's what it is. But again, I tell you, there's a lot that I have to send back. <clears throat> again, if you hold certification and licensing, that's far as basically writing plans. Under the law, they've got requirements too. It's circled around the PMT of submitting every farm operation soil test phosphorus levels in the state anonymously. Again, that was done again. It was done in 2015. It was done again in fall of 2021. So we've gotten most of that data. I know we haven't gotten it all. Those consultants also are subject to penalties if they don't do that. Um, so again, it's because we got to have the data. Again, there's penalties that were increased. If you don't have a plan, you're not willing to get a plan, but you're required to get a plan. We're going to warn you. We're going to give you every opportunity to get there. Currently, it was $2,000 maximum. It's been raised to five. So the intent is to get what we need. <clears throat> Again, because ultimately we got to report to the governor by the end of every year all that basic data of what's manures coming, going in out of the state, where is it coming from, where is it going, what kind of crops are being grown, what kind of fertilizers being used. Um, that's basically what we're tracking. Again, PMT, nothing new. But again, it was regulations were passed back in 2015. You know, most of us probably been here since then. And they went into effect. They were phased in over a six year period, which ultimately means they went into full effect in July of 2021. So this is the very first year that we are fully under PMT implementation that may, may make a difference in your nutrient management plan. Again, up until that point, assuming you had to do something different come 2022, you were kind of weaned down, so you may have been able to do something last year that you can no longer do. Again, the key is your plan. The key is a conversation with your consultant. Again, the last data we collected was, again, in September of 2021. Most of it is here. We don't have it all. It's still being compiled. And again, it'll basically be a report that is on a synopsis basis that is say, in this county, there was this many acres, this many acres were low, this many acres were medium, this many acres were high, this many acres are excessive. And again, it's probably going to get compared to the one five years ago. And like everything else, someone will make an assumption. <clears throat> but again, it's what we've got. So again, PMT is important. It's only apl applicable if you're over 150 FIV on your soil test and you want to apply phosphorus. If you ain't applying phosphorus, it's a meaningless thing to you. But if you're over 150 and for whatever reason you want to apply phosphorus because I'm going to use chicken litter or I want to use a starter, you just have to communicate that to your consultant. They're going to run the test to see if it's allowed, if that's the right word. Again, the technical user's guide from the university, surface water things are all play into PMT calculations. In other words, they're site conditions. They are what they are. Your consultant's going to evaluate them. You may be able to manipulate it to some degree, but a lot of things you cannot change easily. <clears throat> Again, talks about setbacks for nutrient application. This is nothing new. It's just a reminder. They're going to be built into your plan by your consultant. If it's applicable, then we're expecting you to implement it. Again, it talks about excluding livestock from stream, not a big factor in this part of the state, but it is in parts of the state. Again, if we had to measure for setbacks, it's just kind of saying here's where it's, how it's done. Again, we have application kind of seasons like spring and summer, winter, fall, you know, you have certain allowances. In some cases, you can apply nutrients and, or have limitations. Other times, you can't. Royden, I think, alluded a little bit on this this morning. Some of this has been tweaked a little bit recently. Um, but a lot of, I'm not Royden, excuse me, Hans, <laughs> I've I'm, I'm been around too long, <laughs> um, alluded to some of this. So some of this stuff has been changed a little bit recently or is being proposed to be changed. And, and, and it's a lot of it focused on what I call what should be the food processing waste residuals that have caused us some issues throughout the state, generally circling around the odors in them. But again, there's some things being proposed as we speak on some of that, but it's not going to apply to most of us. Again, you know, this talks about winter application. So basically, give or take a little, from December the 16th to the end of February, you're really not supposed to be out there applying any nutrients. There are allowances when need be. Again, 
contact information that changed pretty much about two years ago when the pandemic hit. Needless to say, we've all changed a lot of things. So like myself, I work 100% from home. I do not have an office assigned as MDA. In other words, I, that's why everything went to a PO box in my world a couple years ago when you do annual reports because I live in Cordova, so that's my closest resource to get my data. Uh, again, I spend 50% plus of my time out in the field anyhow, but I work from home. Again, we got cell phones, you can text, you can call, we have email, you can do whatever you need to be to get a hold of us, we're still there. So anybody got any quick questions? Yes, sir. Is there any way NDA can set that portal up for the AIR where it saves one from previous from the year before? I would say that's certainly a desire. I'm not saying that we can or can't. There's a lot of things in there that certainly can stand some improvement. Good, bad, or indifferent. Last year it got jammed on us at the last minute and we had to run with it. And if you, some of you did, some of you were really proactive last year and started trying to do it in the first couple of weeks, we had a lot of problems. You know, we got through that. It's like everything else, oh, we're going to change, we're going to modify it before next year, and then next year comes and we're still running with the same one. It's going to be some limitations because, again, it's a third-party contractor that's really doing that, so I can't make any promises, but there is intent to do things better and easier than what we've got today.